what's good y'all your boy ross back at again with another video so we're gonna check out wwe has a big problem with money in the bank by none other than wrestlemania we're gonna see what wrestlemania is talking about money in the bank is upon us i'm filming this on friday we will be live streaming it tomorrow on the main page so be on the lookout for that we're gonna see who's going to win money in the bank and potentially dethrone roman reigns i'm also gonna do my probably my thoughts and well my previews and prediction video but i'm gonna switch it up um i'm gonna probably drop that tomorrow but i'm gonna switch up the format i'm really just gonna be talking about the money in the bank matches the men's and women's because that's really the matches everyone really wants to talk about and, and interested in so i'm gonna really just be talking about that for my preview and predictions video so be on the lookout for that most likely i'm i'm thinking maybe tomorrow most likely <laughs> obviously it have to be tomorrow early tomorrow morning so be on the lookout for that let's get right into this video man this should be a interesting one because i really want to see what wrestlemania has to say about money in the bank 2022 money in the bank premium event but there's a serious problem with the show the money in the bank ladder match itself join us now as we look at wwe's biggest problem with money in the bank be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out WrestleMania.co.uk and an unwrestling channel, Incredible. Now should WWE scrap money in the bank altogether? Hmm. Fans have already seen the WWE drop or diminish many of its stipulation heavy pay-per-views, but should money in the bank, which has been a pay-per-view since 2010 and a match since 2005's WrestleMania 21, join the pay-per-view trash heap of history? Money in the Bank wouldn't be the first themed event to see its star fall or disappear. Yeah. For example, the WWE dropped TLC in 2021, and the show is currently not on the WWE's 2022 schedule. Then there are stipulation-heavy oh, shows like Extreme, Extreme Rules and Hell in a Cell, which have seen a decrease in number of stipulation mm -hmm. matches on the shows. 2021's Extreme Rules show featured just one stipulation match. Extreme Rules definitely does not need to be a pay-per-view. Hell in a Cell... Please get rid of that as a pay-per-view. Uh, Hell in a Cell, trash as a pay-per-view, bro. I can't stand it. Even though this pre recent Hell in a Cell was good because of the whole Cody situation, Cody and Seth Rollins, but it does not need to be a pay-per-view. No. Match. Well, this year's Hell in a Cell featured See? only one Hell in a Cell. While the WWE seems to be moving away from stipulation-heavy events, Money in the Bank has been seen as one of the WWE's special events besides mm -hmm. its big four, that being WrestleMania, SummerSlam, Survivor Series, and the Royal Rumble, yeah. so much that Nick Khan hopes to capitalize on its seeming popularity by holding this year's event at the Allegiant Stadium and transforming the WWE's big four into a big five. But this turned into a big flop, mm -hmm. as there weren't enough tickets sold, which, as you no doubt heard, led to the WWE switching venues to a yep. small arena. Now, there are a number of reasons that could explain Money in the Bank's poor ticket sales, but arguably the core problem is the WWE's handling of the match's winners and cash-ins. Let's look at these problems and see if the event should be scrapped altogether. Rocket to the top. Now, once upon a time, the Money in the Bank contract was a useful tool for strapping a rocket to a wrestler's back. The concept of a match where the winner could earn a world championship contract that they could cash in at any time quickly proved popular. When they originally debuted at WrestleMania and it became a thing at WrestleMania, it was for me one of the matches I was most looking forward to. Not only because the match was just always entertaining and just it was so much carnage or whatnot, <laughs> the sicko in me, but the simple fact that you potentially was going to see a new star being born from that match. And that's what I initially loved about it when it was featured only at WrestleMania each year. Even better, it proved to be a great way of elevating wrestlers to the next level. This was seen when Edge used his cash in to take out John Cena after the chain gang soldier had wrestled a hellacious match. Edge went from a perennial title aspirant to a legitimate champion. Mm -hmm. The WWE used CM Punk's briefcase wins even better. Punk won the event two years in a row, successfully cashing them in both times and adding a twist to his second win by turning heel after yep. he cashed it in on Jeff Hardy after Hardy had finished wrestling. These cash-ins elevated Punk into the main event, and while Punk was not entirely happy with his WWE push, 
it's hard to argue that he did not enjoy a lengthy run in the main event. Likewise, Rob Van Dam did well when he won the briefcase, cashing it in successfully against yep. John Cena at 2006's ECW One Night Stand pay-per-view. But there's been some crappy cash-ins. But this every is, cash -in has been too. a success, and the WWE deserves credit for maintaining a certain number of unsuccessful cash-ins to maintain suspense whenever someone captures the briefcase. The idea should be to maintain suspense without diminishing the wrestler's value when he's unsuccessfully cashing in his briefcase. The WWE protected John Cena when he unsuccessfully cashed in his briefcase, but it didn't do this with the unsuccessful no, cash-ins involving Damian Sandow they or Baron did. Corbin. As in Corbin's case, his unsuccessful cash-in was seen as a punishment for yeah. heat he'd allegedly incurred with WWE management. As bad as Braun Strowman's unsuccessful cash-in was, Which was awful. it had less to do with the bad booking of the briefcase than it did with the bad booking of Braun. So is it down to poor planning? As fans have seen with AEW and WWE getting socked with injuries, long-term planning can prove problematic. However, there are differences between plans going awry, such as when Mr. Kennedy won the Money in the Bank briefcase in 2007 but had to drop it after an injury, and the WWE's booking on the fly as 2020's decision to give Otis the briefcase. That just made... I didn't even... I want to say I think that may have been the first Money in the Bank I didn't watch. I think that was. That was the first Money in the Bank I never watched. I saw clips of it. I didn't really care. And this was peak pandemic so i was like watching wwe mainly just for the smackdown side of things of roman reigns but i do remember them talking about it was at you know it was at their headquarters or whatever but i didn't watch this match this was the very first money in the bank match i didn't watch Otis seemed like a clever choice at the time as he was right in the midst of a red hot angle with Mandy Rose. Regrettably, the WWE had no idea what to do once no, Otis won they the did briefcase not. and it had the Miz beat him in for a poorly booked match. In other cases, the WWE has had some questionable situations involving mid-card stars winning the briefcase and making successful cash-ins. The trouble here is that this can seem like a fluke devaluing the winner rather than taking them to the next level. The idea behind this seems to be Vince McMahon's belief that having former world champion before your name gives you instant credibility, even if you don't compete in the main event. In some cases, this has worked out well, with The Miz collecting both his world championships through successful cash-ins mm -hmm. and enjoying a solid career in the WWE as someone who can gravitate from main event down to mid-card as needed. Unfortunately, The Miz has been the exception as other winners like Dolph yeah. Ziggler and Jack Swagger saw their world title reigns do diddly squat for their careers. Nope. There have been some crappy championship reigns. Even when the briefcase cash-ins are successful, the WWE has often booked the champions poorly. Nikki Ash's 2021 cash-in against Charlotte Flair for the Raw Women's Championship seemed like the perfect step in Nikki's comeback story. Yeah. The reign turned into a disaster after she lost her title just two months later to Charlotte at SummerSlam with a push evaporating. Yeah, th this is the issue here is sometimes when they put the belt or well, the briefcase on someone, have them win it, they don't do nothing with their reign. They don't do nothing to elevate their reign. It's just like... Yeah, you have the belt. That's cool. Now, what are you going to do with it? And that comes down to their booking. And the women's division, especially on Raw, it's just it's not as – it doesn't have that much depth. I mean, it does in a sense. You could build up some interesting feuds if you choose to, but that's if you choose to. You know what I'm saying? Nikki Ash winning the championship. I'm like, okay, well, winning the money in the bank, getting the championship off of Charlotte. I was like, all right, that's cool. Just for them to put it on Charlotte two months later. So it was like, what was the point? You know? Even as she held the women's title, another questionable reign occurred that mm -hmm. same year when the 2021 men's money in the bank winner Big Big e. successfully cashed in his briefcase to defeat Bobby Lashley for the championship. Big E's championship reign lasted 110 days, with the champion often seeming to take a back seat to the yep. drama going on between his challengers. As bad as that was, the WWE had Biggie drop the title clean to Brock Lesnar at day one in a fatal five-way match. But Biggie didn't have to take the pin, but he did. Biggie should have not taken the pin there. I'm sorry. It's like Brock Lesnar has his love for destroying New Day members as champs. Is, it has no bounds. Biggie should not have eaten the pin there. Anyone else could have ate the pin. Biggie, though, it just... It solidified his title run not really doing much. It, it didn't amount to much. The same thing with Kofi. They maybe had one feud between both of them, Kofi and Big E, that was actually somewhat, you know, had some type of steam, had some type of motion, some momentum to it. 
And then after that, it was just nothing really. Like, it's not really memorable. And that sucks because a lot of us like Biggie. A lot of us like Kofi. But when we think of the title reigns, we don't think of, like, oh, this was a legendary one. Like, for example, with Edge. When Edge cashed in on John Cena, we remember the cash in and we remember the title reign because that's when Edge could not be controlled. With Big E and, and Kofi Kingston, Kofi Kingston, we remember his rise, the, the, the rise to the title what was the most memorable, memorable part. We remember Big E winning and then cashing in that moment. That was cool to see. But after that, people don't really too much remember anything after they won it. Except maybe a couple of feuds. This feud with 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 um with uh Bobby Lashley. Uh Randy Orton feuding with Kofi Kingston. That was cool. Uh, it it should have been better, but that's what I'm trying to say. Like winning the championship is cool, winning money in the bank is cool, but if you're not booked correctly, none of it really matters in the grand scheme of king things other than oh you may you may cash in and win the championship, but you will you know, it's like a it's like you won't be remembered for having a, a memorable title run. You'll just be like, oh, that's the guy that won the championship that one time for cashing in. You, me personally, I think it should be it should be more important. They should be booking them as the next as the next big star for that brand. Making his reign appear weak in the eyes of many of his fans. But maybe the problem seems the Roman Reigns factor. Uh oh. Now the biggest problem plaguing the men's money in the bank match is Roman Reigns holding the undisputed championship. But short of a dramatic change in WWE's booking, there's no end in sight for Reigns' vice like grip on the undisputed <laughs> title. Further complicating matters is the WWE's decision to unify both belts. It doesn't matter who wins the briefcase because there's no way someone is going to successfully cash in their briefcase against Reigns. While there has been talk of Reigns somehow dropping the championship in order to free up a belt for the mere mortals on Raw, that seems <laughs> Bro, Raw is treated like, like, like garbage, bro. When we're talking about just having a main champion, they don't have one. And honestly... Raw has been more of the more enjoyable show. Surprisingly, it's been more enjoyable than SmackDown. Because SmackDown, Roman barely shows up. Raw is just, you mere peasants. You don't get a head champion. All you get is Austin Theory, which is cool. But you don't have no head champion. You get a women's Raw champion, that's cool too. But you don't get no head champion. Likely to us, as the only way that would happen would be for the WWE to strip reins of the belt over a storyline infraction. Money in the Bank has lost some of its luster over the years, but there's no reason it can't be fixed. The women's Money in the Bank is relatively new compared to the men's match, but other than the questionable reigns like Nikki Ash, the WWE has a good track record with the women's briefcase. For the most there's part. There's no reason to scrap the women's ladder match, but what about the men's match? The men's briefcase bout has a number of flaws we've already mentioned, and as long as Roman Reigns holds the undisputed championship, the suspense of the title being cashed in at any time is non-existent as long as fans think Reigns is going to remain champion. Plus, he won't even be around for the summer. Now, things won't be any better if a babyface wins either, as it's likely they'll announce their championship challenge ahead of time. Yeah. But how can we fix it? The good news is that it shouldn't take much to fix the Money in the Bank stipulation. As number one, timing the cash in right. For now, the WWE should consider holding off on having this year's briefcase winner cash in their contract. The ideal situation would be to tease having someone cash in their briefcase when Reigns appears vulnerable, yeah. only for something to thwart their cash in. This scenario has played out successfully before and could stretch out a cash in until WrestleMania 39 or after when there's more chance of Reigns counting the lights. Number two, switching things up. One way the WWE could improve the Money in the Bank's appeal would be to consider changing things up, much as it did at the 2020 when the pandemic forced them to hold the event at WWE's headquarters. Mm -hmm. This unforgettable night saw the competitors from both men's and women's events making their way from the bottom to the top of WWE's headquarters with plenty of shenanigans ensuing along the, the way. Although this isn't something that they should be doing every year, it shows that there are ways to change things up. This includes the WWE thinking quick when the company learned that the then Raw Women's Champion Becky Lynch was pregnant. They had Asuka win the briefcase and the next night revealed Becky's pregnancy and that Asuka's briefcase win had made her the Red Brand's champion. Mm. Although Money in the Bank has its problems, its overall history suggests there's no need to scrap it. If the WWE makes some minor modifications, it could turn into one of its most popular shows again. What do you guys think of the problem? 
Honestly, I don't think they need to scrap it. It's still one of their popular shows because people just love the idea of someone winning a briefcase and cashing in. What they need to do is find a way to get the titles off Roman, or at least one of them. Maybe they need to add some type of stipulation where the money in the bank contract, it guarantees you a title shot for one of the titles because he's not losing both. If it's guaranteed... For one of the titles, that makes sense. That's how you get probably the WWE Championship off of Roman. You have to because Raw has no main champion. Doesn't matter how many times he show up, Raw has no main champion. So the best way to do this is to this year's WrestleMania. We'll have a con. The contract will say, you know, what I'm saying potentially whoever wins this. You're able to take either the WWE Championship or the Universal Championship from Roman. Granted, this is why another problem comes into play when they unified it. Because they're, they're setting it up as, as all as one. But they need to find a way to separate it. Because if not, whoever wins the Money in the Bank, they're not beating Roman for both titles. They're not. They're, they're not doing that. Because then you would get rid of Roman Reigns lengthy universal streak which i think they want to still keep intact probably to wrestlemania who knows i just want them to be able to get the wwe championship off of them and put it back on raw that's all i care about that's really all i care about and you can do whatever you do later so i don't know but i don't think they need to let go of the format they need to expound kind of go back to what they were doing before making planning it out best way they can planning it out and having it be Whoever wins this, there's a good chance, it's not a 100% chance, but it's a good chance this may be the next guy up. And what they do is see how the crowd reacts to this person being money in the bank, being the money in the bank winner. How do they react? Are they really feeling his vibe? Are they digging his energy? If so, pull the trigger at the right time. It's very difficult, very strategic, but I feel like sometimes they they throw the belt, uh, the briefcase at someone and then it doesn't really go nowhere. You know what I'm saying? It, they don't really have it planned out on when they're going to cash in or how to increase their stock as the money in the bank winner. I think they need to just go ahead and really think about, all right, we want this person to win because the crowd likes this guy or the crowd hates this guy and he has a lot of momentum. We want to try to make him a new star. That should be the only reason money in the bank is there to create a new star because when Roman is gone, when Brock is gone, when all the legends from the past can't come back, all you will have is what's on the roster. So the time to build up stars should have been years ago, but you got to keep continuing building up your main roster so people can be can buy into these the, the people that's on the roster. That's just me personally. I think they just need to go with that form, format really plan this shit out to be like all right we want this guy to be the guy this is how we're gonna do it for example i can see whenever austin theory uh drops the united states championship maybe next year i can see him being if he had if he drops it you know sometime next year or this year i can see him next year go around for money in the bank i can see him being in that match and i can actually see him winning because of how how much they're really behind Austin Theory right now. And if they continue to keep pushing him in that direction, he could be the next guy up. I could see him winning it sometime next year if they continue to push him because they clearly have an idea they want him to be the next guy. So you got to, you know, make sure you align things and it works that way. If not, you just throw something together and hope and pray that it works. You may get some, you may get some luck there. You may not. So, but comment down below, let me know. Do you guys think they should get rid of the money in the bank format? Or do you guys think they should keep it? And how would you make it better for future stars to be created? I appreciate all love and support. Road to 90K. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all next one. Peace.